Check 1. Tectonic Processes and Hazards. Inquiry Question 1. Part 1. The Structure of Earth. The Earth is made up of different layers and it is important to know the name and description of each one. Asthenosphere. It is the surface layer of the Earth composed of the crust and upper mantle. It is broken into tectonic plates which constantly move. Mantle. The thick, mostly solid, layer of rock located between the crust and the core. It is here that convection currents are found in areas of higher temperature. Mesosphere. This is the upper portion of the mantle consisting of rocks, which are brittle enough to break under stress. Lithosphere. It is the rigid, outermost layer of earth, made up of the crust and the upper mantle. Inner core. The inner core is hot and dense because pressure prevents melting. It consists of an iron-nickel alloy and has a radius of about 1,220 kilometers. Outer core. This is a fluid layer between the solid inner core and the mantle. It is mostly made up of iron and nickel. Part 2. Plate Boundary Types There are three main types of plate boundary. You should know the nature of each and which processes they cause. It is also important to note a case specific for each type to help in exam answers. Convergent or destructive plate boundary Here two plates move together and the most dense plate is subducted and melts into the mantle. At this boundary type, earthquakes are the largest and most damaging as stress builds in the subduction zone. Convergent boundaries create a large proportion of the Earth's active volcanoes and the most explosive types. These tend to be less frequent but more destructive. Some case specifics for convergent plate boundary locations are The Japan 2011 earthquake and tsunami The Nepal 2015 earthquake And the Pinatubo eruption of 1991 for more information on these, see my case study series, which contains the key information you should include in your answers. Conservative plate boundary. This is where one plate slides against another and lithosphere is neither created or destroyed. Conservative plate boundaries create shallow focus earthquakes that can be very destructive. They do not cause volcanic activity. Case specifics include. Los Angeles 1994 earthquake and the Christchurch earthquake of 2011. Divergent or constructive plate boundary. Here two plates move apart from each other. This leads to the creation of crust and is most clearly displayed at mid-ocean ridges. The earthquakes created are frequent, low-risk seismic activity, which do not normally cause tsunamis. Rift volcanoes are created which are usually less explosive and more effusive, especially deep underwater. Case specifics to note are the 2002 Mount Nyiragongo eruption and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Part 3. Plate Tectonic Theory The next slides explain plate tectonic processes you need to understand. Firstly, convection. Heat is produced by the decay of radioactive elements, meaning areas of the lower mantle are heated. These hot liquid magma currents circulate in the asthenosphere, meaning that the tectonic plates are moved. Slab pull. Newly formed oceanic crust is denser and heavier once cooled. As a result, it sinks into the mantle under its own weight. Consequently, the rest of the plate is pulled down. Subduction. This process counters seafloor spreading by destroying crust. One plate moves under another and melts in the mantle. This area is called a subduction zone. Seafloor spreading occurs where magma is forced up from the asthenosphere and hardens. The new crust forces plates apart. A key term to understand is paleomagnetism, when rock forms from lava the minerals align with the Earth's polarity. This changes about every 400,000 years so patterns form. Part 4 covers the previously discussed plate boundaries in more detail. There are six types of plate boundary that you need to know about. Convergent plate boundary, oceanic and continental. Two plates move towards each other creating a destructive plate boundary. The denser plate subducts under the other and melts. 
Key features include deep ocean trenches, volcanic arcs, fold mountains, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Convergent plate boundary, oceanic and oceanic. Two plates move towards each other creating a destructive plate boundary. The denser plate subducts under the other and melts. Key features include deep ocean trenches, island arcs, submarine volcanic activity and earthquakes. Convergent plate boundary, continental and continental. Two plates move towards each other but neither subducts. The plates fold and uplift. Key features include fold mountains, no subduction, earthquakes and an ongoing uplift. Constructive plate boundary, oceanic and oceanic. Two oceanic plates move apart. Magma rises to fill gap and new oceanic crust forms. Key features include mid-ocean ridges, volcanic activity and earthquakes. Constructive plate boundary, continental and continental. Two continental plates move apart creating a rift valley or volcano as the crust stretches and thins. Key features include rift valleys, volcanic activity and earthquakes. Conservative plate boundary. Two plates slide past each other horizontally. As a result, friction and stress builds. Key features include strike-slip faults, earthquakes, but no volcanic activity. Part 5. Volcanic Hazards There are seven main volcanic hazards to be aware of. These are Pyroclastic flows Ash or tephra Lava flows Lavas Volcanic gases Tsunamis and jokulorps Pyroclastic flows a pyroclastic flow is a fast-moving, destructive current of hot volcanic gas, ash, and rock fragments that move away from a volcano. They can be as hot as 1000 degrees Celsius. These are most hazardous at ground level. They are caused by the explosion of bubbles of molten magma in the volcano. Ash or tephra. These are materials ejected into the atmosphere during an eruption. It can vary in size, for example bombs which are more than 32 mm in diameter. It can cause roofs to collapse. And can impact air travel. Lava flows. This is a flow of lava away from a volcano. It can be very dangerous if fast moving. The viscosity is determined by the amount of silicon dioxide it contains, and impacts the speed at which it travels. Lavas. These are volcanic mud flows composed of silt and sand. It is secondary hazard brought on by rainfall mixing with materials ejected from the volcano. Volcanic gases. This is a hazard associated with explosive eruptions. The gas clouds are normally made up of water vapor, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen, and carbon monoxide. It can lead to acid rain, which has many environmental, social, and economic impacts, which you can consider in answers. Tsunamis. When a huge volume of water is displaced at once, forming massive, destructive waves. This is a secondary hazard. This process is explored in more depth later on in the video. Jokulorps. This is a glacial outburst flood. They occur when a lake fed by glacial meltwater breaks its dam and drains suddenly and catastrophically. Part 6. Hotspot Volcanoes and Mantle Plumes. In this part one we'll quickly cover the topic of hotspot volcanism and mantle plumes. A hotspot volcano is one that does not form at plate boundaries. It is formed as a result of a volcanic hotspot, an area in the mantle from which heat rises from a hot thermal plume deep in the earth. The crust is melted away and magma rises through the cracks to form active volcanoes. The hotspot is stationary so as the tectonic plate moves away, island chains form over extended periods of time. An example of this is Hawaii. As you can see below, the islands form in a chain leaving extinct volcanic islands behind the active one. Part 7. Earthquakes and Tsunamis In this part we will cover The cause of an earthquake Seismic waves Secondary hazards of earthquakes How tsunamis form and factors in how impactful these are The sequence below shows how an earthquake occurs Tectonic strain builds gradually, which stores elastic energy in crustal rocks. When the pressure exceeds the strength of the fault, the rock fractures. 
This produces the sudden release of energy, creating seismic waves that radiate away from the point of fracture. The brittle crust rebounds either side of the fracture, which is the ground shaking. The diagram below shows the anatomy of an earthquake. Fault, a fracture in the rocks that make up the Earth's crust. Epicenter, the point at the Earth's surface directly above the hypocenter. Hypocenter, the point within the Earth where an earthquake rupture starts. The first type of seismic wave is a P wave, also known as a primary wave. The vibrations are caused by compression. They spread quickly from the fault at a rate of 8 km per second. They can travel through liquids. S waves, or secondary waves, vibrate at right angles to the direction of travel. Move at 4 km per second. They cannot travel through liquids. L waves, or love waves are the final type of seismic wave to know. Vibration occurs in the horizontal plane. They are high amplitude and cause the most damage. Secondary hazards of earthquakes. The first hazard we will look at is soil liquefaction. This is a natural hazard that occurs when soil loses its strength and stiffness and behaves like a liquid in response to an applied stress, such as an earthquake. This can cause major damage to buildings and other structures. Soil liquefaction occurs when waterlogged, loosely packed sediments at or near the ground surface lose strength due to strong ground shaking. The 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake in California is an example of an earthquake that caused this. Another hazard is a landslide. These are common in mountainous areas such as Nepal. These flows of material can travel many miles, causing damage to property and the environment. How tsunamis form A sudden shift in plate movement causes water displacement at the epicenter. Large waves move along the seabed away from the epicenter. As the waves move from deep water to shallow water near the coastal area, they increase in height and break. Factors affecting the impact of a tsunami Below is a list of the factors you should consider. The duration of the tsunami. The wave amplitude. The depth of the water. The gradient of beach. Night versus day, this impacts the number of people out. The level of development. Strength of infrastructure. Warning systems and how much notice is given. The last part of this video will cover the features of effusive and explosive volcanic eruptions. The table below shows the features of effusive and explosive eruptions. In short explosive eruptions produce huge amounts of material, which has a major impact. These are the types of eruption that produce huge clouds and can cause international problems. For example, air travel. Effusive eruptions result in the outpouring of lava onto the ground because it is low viscosity.